Hello, this is astrologer coach Sonia Francis and today we're going to be talking about the upcoming solar eclipse in 9 degrees of Virgo which will be exact on September 1st at 5.03 a.m. East Coast time in the U.S. which is also New York time or 2.03 a.m. Pacific time which is West Coast time in the U.S which is also LA time. Now this marks a new beginning of both a new moon cycle and an eclipse cycle, right? Because the uh, a solar eclipse is always a very powerful new moon. And so this is an introverted time. It's a time where we definitely want to go within, especially for the first 48 hours of the eclipse. We're feeling very much a need to just be quiet and to just take it easy and stay grounded within ourselves. There's a lot of energy that coming, that's coming through us at that time. And so um, we're, as far as setting our intentions for this new eclipse cycle goes, which lasts for about five and a half months, uh, I will talk a little bit more about the most potent times for that at the end of this video. But please stay tuned because these are different from the regular new moon intentions. The best and most potent times are not the same as with a regular new moon. So stay tuned. But let's first talk about the eclipses. So like I said, eclipses take place approximately every six months, five and a half to six months. And a solar eclipse brings a consciousness upgrade and a shift that will unfold within that eclipse cycle so within the next five and a half months in this case it will be until late february of 2017 eclipses also uh, uh work in 19 year cycles in the sense that every 19 years there will be a solar eclipse in exactly the same degree and the same sign um and so uh last the last time we had a solar eclipse in nine degrees of virgo was in September of 1997 and so you can think back to that time and just kind of see like were there any major endings or any major beginnings at that time for you um, and of course it's not gonna play out identical to what it was in 1997 because you're 19 years older and more wiser hopefully and so things have probably shifted for you already there has been an evolution uh, but what can happen is, you know, there, there's a resonance that happens with, with a particular area of our lives, for example, uh, or if there's personal planets in our chart involved with the, with the solar eclipse, we will definitely feel a resonance to those planets and those areas of our lives. So if you have natal planets within five degrees of this eclipse, you will definitely experience more dramatic changes than other people. But I'll talk about that a little bit later towards the end um, in more detail. But let's first talk about uh, this eclipse. So the sun and moon uh, are conjunct just like in a regular new moon, but they're also connected to the moon nodes, right? So what that means is that the moon nodes, they represent our soul's journey. And because of uh, these moon nodes connecting to the sun and the moon, we're experiencing an eclipse, which means that the sun, the moon, and the earth align in such a way that uh, that we can't see that we can't see the sun or the moon, depending on whether it's a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse, right? So in this case, with this solar eclipse, uh, the the sun and the moon are in alignment with the north node. Uh, and North Node eclipses help us move towards our next exploration of an energy that promotes our soul evolution. So we're really learning something new. The North Node is all about putting our focus somewhere um, where we're exploring something without expectation, where we're capable of really seeing the energy in a very neutral way. And so we're we're learning to to work th towards the healthy uh, uh, exploration or the healthy vibrations of Virgo, right? Um, now, um, with this extra powerful full moon, right, with the energy being in Virgo, that what we're really exploring here is we're exploring being of service, right? That's a very high vibration of Virgo. We're also uh, exploring... Uh, what it means to strengthen our focus on improving daily routines and getting organized and to take care of any health matters. So it's really about finding a way to have sort of like a smoother flow. It's about the smooth flow of the, um, 
of the physical things in our life. So whether that's the physical things in our outer life, right, in, you know, in our work environment or in our daily routines at home, or if it has to do with the physical reality of our body, right, the, what, how does our, our body can work more efficiently and more smoothly in terms of our inner organs, right, and, and being really clean and being really pure, right so that's a very high vibration of virgo is is finding a way to to make that happen so since we already experienced a solar eclipse in virgo last september for the first time this is really a good time to see how far we've come in those areas of our lives since then so in regards to our you know daily routines at home at work with our health uh, uh, matters uh, or, or wellness in regards to our own wellness, you know, how far have we come? What have we discovered since last September and where do we need more attention? Now, the reason why we already had an eclipse last September is because the moon nodes move through each sign. Uh, uh, it takes them about a, um, a year and a half to move through each of the signs. And so therefore, for that amount of time, the eclipses will be in the same sign. Not in the same degree necessarily, but in the same science, right? So that's why we've already had an eclipse in Virgo last September. Now, within the next five months, we will also be will also be a really great time to begin new projects that are connected to the Virgo energy, so that are connected to anything that demands our attention for detail, anything that's connected to precise work, list making. Uh, small accomplishments in our daily routines or work environment um, and and some some examples could be you know that we're starting a new health regime for example or that we're paying more close attention to our diet or um, you know our, maybe a new workout routine or maybe a new work routine you know in terms of like our work day-to-day -day work um, so uh, it could be anything um, that, that helps us, you know, with our routines, right? That helps us um, make them more smoothly and manage our lives more constructively and easier. So and in a more mindful way, so we don't have to clutter our mind with, you know, things that are, uh, you know, not necessary um, so that, that our life gets a little bit easier, right? And this is all about, you know, Definitely handling the nitty-gritty details of our day-to-day -day life in terms of being more organized in a step-to-step -step fashion. And, and so we also can, uh, can experience the sort of like uh, a mind that's more at ease, right? And so one thing you can ask yourself uh, for the next uh, five months is what would clear the decks in my life, right? So what would help, help me have less cl clutter in my life when it comes to your wellness or your well-being when it comes to your your work and also when it comes to your uh, you know your daily routines at home okay now another way to step into the higher vibrations of virgo is to recognize that humility and self-improvement practical self-improvement and being of service really bring us closer to our inner divinity and our soul's path and, and uh, that is something that's also brings in sort of like the Pisces energy a little bit as well, which is the opposite of Virgo, right? The south node is in Pisces right now. And so that south node needs to be integrated as well, right? Through going towards the north node, we're able to connect more fully towards that south node, towards that Pisces energy in a healthy way, in a way where we're really connecting to our inner divinity and our intuitive sensing, uh, in a healthy way. Okay. Now, Mercury, the ruler of Virgo, is retrograde at the time of the eclipse. And so it's retrograde in its own sign. It's also in Virgo. And so the energy, therefore, is experienced on a more internal level. And we feel better when we're not being pressured into making quick decisions. We, we need more time to marinate in, in, in certain information or certain communications or things that we're, that we're, working through with our mind we need to digest a little bit more we need to reconsider certain things and so take your time especially with your decision making process there is no rush at this time right 
Now we're also invited to revisit any issues that would benefit from more clarity that have come up, you know, these past three months and in particular these past three weeks during the Mercury station. And so what in your life needs revisiting and what calls out for your close attention, right? Where do we need to zoom in a little bit more into the details and how might you reorganize your daily routines or health routines or health practices, right? And, and where have you not been able to make clear decisions in the last three months or three weeks? You know, like, like where has it been difficult to make decisions? So what might be possible if you had more information? How might you be able to make clearer decisions if you had more information? Great question, I think, which is has helped me a lot in the past just to think about that. Where do I need more information? If I'm feeling confused or if I'm feeling, you know, uh, um, emotionalized about something, you know, if I feel scared about something, you know, to, to really ask myself, you know, where do I need more information in order to feel more grounded, in order to feel more clear about what my next step might be? right now with all the questions of this video I also want you to know that they are available on my website as well at astrologercoach.com via my weekly forecast so you can go to my weekly forecasts page after August 28th uh, I will have posted uh, the, the 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 forecast for the week of the solar eclipse but you can also receive them via email if you email us at info at astrologercoach.com and write weekly forecasts in the subject line and then we will email you the weekly forecasts every Sunday evening so that you have that for the next, for the following week and can read it and uh, get more in alignment with what's coming up. Now back to the eclipse, let's talk a little bit more about Mercury. Mercury is also in alignment with Jupiter in Virgo and makes an opposition to Chiron in Pisces. So it's retrograde now, but it's, it's still conjunct Jupiter, just like it was uh, during the time of the full moon in Aquarius, uh, my last video that I recorded, right? So this is very similar to what we have already been experienced during the, the time of the full moon in Aquarius. So feel free to watch my video about that one more time as well. There, there's more information there too. But uh, real quick to just recap, you know, we're really invited to go beyond the details and, and put our trust in our healing process as well. To sort of like allow ourselves to, to bring the healing into our daily routines and to kind of integrate the two, you know. So... What might be possible, for example, if we looked at things from more than just one point of view, right? And, and how would that help our healing process? And then also we're asked to find the balance between those, between those two opposite energies, right? On the one hand, that need for organization and practical improvements. On the other hand, the need for emotional and spiritual healing. So how can we bring that together, right? How can we allow for that to happen uh, at the same time. Now the word heal comes from the root word whole, right? And so healing really means that we're reuniting what has felt separated for us, right? So where we felt a separation in childhood or we felt a separation um, earlier on in life, in, in an area of our lives, uh, we're, we're now learning or, or hoping to reunite those two in our healing processes, right? And healing happens through acceptance and through integration, right? By really connecting with something in a caring, loving, kind, compassionate way that has been wounded inside of ourselves, that's how we can really integrate it and, and bring a uh, a sense of wholeness to it right and reunite with it and so we're being invited to take a more holistic approach to our day-to-day -day functioning to our daily routines to our daily routines at work at home and also with our health and so you can ask yourself here you know what cries out to be made more whole in your life you know and what if self-compassion and understanding were the perfect tools to accomplish that. 
And, and the last question you can ask yourself is, what if we simply embraced our imperfections as perfect? If we could view them as perfect, even though we've, we've been under the impression for the, for the first half of our lives or up until now that these are all imperfections that we have, how about we shift our perspective and we don't see them as imperfections, but we just see them as something that's unique, that's different, and that's actually exactly as it needs to be. It's perfect, right? And that through that embracing the imperfection as perfect, we can tap more fully into the gold that these imperfections hold for us, right? So just kind of be with all these questions, you know, sit with these questions, maybe journal on them, meditate on these questions. They're, they're, they're really great questions to just allow yourself to marinate in. You don't have to answer them right away. Just allow yourself to have them in the back of your mind as you keep going over the next five months and just see how you can reconnect to those questions time after time, all right? Now, the solar eclipse is also making an opposition to Neptune in Pisces. And this is calling us to balance our understanding the facts with taking in our intuitive knowingness, right? So Neptune is very much about our intuitive knowingness. The solar eclipse in Virgo is about wanting to know what's happening, understanding the facts, understanding the details, right? So kind of finding that balance. And so what you can ask yourself here is how can we best connect to the subtle messages of our body and soul which that would be connected to that Neptune energy in Pisces right and what would it look like if we allowed the mind to be in service to those subtle messages so the mind which of course is connected to Virgo the practical mind right how can the practical mind be in service to these subtle intuitive uh, messages sensing you know, we experience that either in our torso somewhere or in our heart chakra or there's sort of like a, a, a very subtle voice that keeps coming in and, and telling us very loving, very kind messages. And how can we like allow the, the practical mind to really be in service to those subtle messages, right? Again, a great question to kind of be with and sit with uh, for the next five months. Now, uh, last thing I want to talk about is that Saturn and Mars in Sagittarius are still the focal point of that T-square that I talked about in my last video as well, right? So again, the full moon in Aquarius definitely ha already had a very strong resonance with what's occurring uh, with this solar eclipse. And of course, Neptune is involved in that T-square. The moon nodes are involved in that T-square. And uh, with the eclipse, the, the sun and the moon are involved in this T-square as well. So very powerful. This is why this eclipse will create a lot of shifts and a lot of needing to shift our attitudes uh, of, towards life and, and how we do life. You know, So there's a lot of needing to stretch ourselves with this eclipse. And so this is asking us to really find creative solutions and to connect to our own inner authority around what we believe to be true about ourselves, about life, and about what's true or false in general, right? So again, you know, feel free to also watch my last video on that as well. Now, the best way to achieve this connection to our inner authority or, or to what's true or not true in terms of uh, um, our belief systems is by really checking in with our inner dialogue, right? And to, to looking realistically at our conditioning from the past, right? To really look to see where, where did these attitudes that we have towards life or ourselves or others or society, where did those, those attitudes start? You know, how did we begin to develop these attitudes? And are they still... The kind of attitudes that we want to hold on to in order for us to to have better results in life to manifest things in our lives that that are more in alignment with who we are now so there's a couple of questions you can ask yourself here which is what is true right now what works in my life right now and how is that different from what was true 10 or 20 years ago and how is that different 
um, in terms of like my attitudes and in terms of like my expectations that I have towards things. And two more questions that I have. How can we release old dogmas, old fixed ideas? Or how can we release waiting to be saved? This idea of that somebody needs to save us or that, that there's something out there that will save us, right? So how can we release either fixed ideas or this sense of like, I need to be saved, right? Which is very different, but one is sort of more Neptunian and the other one is more that, that Saturn placement, right? So again, whichever, what, whatever you resonate more with, it's a great, great question to ask yourself. And then also, what role does guilt play in your perception of life? You know, Saturn very often has to do also with, with uh, the level of guilt that we experience uh, in life. And, and that's, that's more the lower vibration of Saturn. But sometimes it's good to, to kind of understand, you know, what does, what does guilt play in my life? Like, wh how do I, when do I feel it and why? And, and where does it come from? You know, how, why do I feel guilt? Right. Because, again, that's guilt comes from a particular perception that we have about something. And so, therefore, we're, we're feeling the guilt. So that's a great investigation to have with yourself to just kind of observe, you know, where does guilt come from in my life? Right. Again, feel free to watch my full moon video in Aquarius again on, on those um, on, on that T-square as well. Um, and so I just want to say that, you know, the message of this solar eclipse really for the next uh, five and a half months is that, you know, if we change our perspective and our beliefs and align ourselves with who we are right now in this moment, we can really overcome anything. And we have the strength to do what it takes and to be a responsible being in our own right and to, to, to just kind of, if we keep our mind and heart wide open, you know, and, and really connect to every moment of now and to keep our mind and heart open every moment of now, then we can handle no matter what shows up, anything that shows up, no matter what you're conditioning, no matter what you believe to be true, if you keep your mind and heart open, you can always access an inner strength that's always there, that can always handle no matter what shows up. So... Most of all, for eclipse season, okay, just to help you understand a little bit the whole eclipse season. Um, it is about allowing for new templates that are being downloaded at this time for those four weeks. And so eclipses can bring a feeling of uncertainty. And uh, the reason for that is that we don't have all the information that we need to make informed decisions during that time. So just for those four weeks, there's this sense of like, you know, feeling a little bit on edge or feeling a little bit jumpy or feeling a little bit um, maybe anxious as well uh, because there's, there's all these downloads are coming in. But while the downloads are coming in, there's, you know, there's not, we don't always have everything that we need to move forward, right? So uh, once eclipse season is over, which will be on September 30th, right, which is the, the end of the lunar eclipse cycle, that's when we will have more information. We will, we will have completed that upgrade. We will have completed that download. So for the next four weeks, just refrain from starting anything brand new, especially if you're feeling anxious or uneasy about something and you want to just kind of go for it, just Try not to, if you can. Uh, however, if new things emerge organically during that time, that is perfect, right? So if, if, if there's a new beginning of some sort that happens organically, that doesn't come from fearful behavior or doesn't come from forcing or pushing, then that's perfect, right? So you just want to stay away from, from forcing anything or pushing an agenda just because you're feeling anxious or nervous, right? Now... We are definitely moving to the next level of our soul's evolution with this eclipse or, or throughout the eclipse cycle. So, um, so as best as you can, you know, stay centered and grounded from within, especially until September 30th during eclipse season. Flexibility helps a lot. 
uh, as thus focusing on your breath and also uh, what's really helpful is just allowing yourself to be the observer of your emotional and mental body so really allowing yourself to just kind of like take a step back and and just see what what comes up on an emotional level mental level physical level and then just remember that this is not going to last forever eclipse season is a just for four weeks and at that point the downloads are complete and you know until until then you know trust that all is well and that you're moving exactly where you need to go that this is taking you this eclipse energy is taking you exactly where you need to go very important to remember right now ascendant if you have an ascendant or any personal planets in 4 to 14 degrees so that would be 5 degrees within the eclipse right 4 to 14 degrees Virgo, Pisces, Gemini, or Sagittarius in particular, those, um, if you have any planets or ascendant in those uh, signs and degrees, you will feel the impact of this eclipse uh, definitely pretty strongly. If you don't have personal planets or signs in those degrees or signs, then take a look at the house placement in your natal chart that's affected by the eclipse that's equally as important. Uh, that indicates which area of your life is up for development for the next five and a half months where you're moving towards that Virgo energy in that area of your life. And then, um, you know, look to see, um, you know, what the meaning of that house is, right? So the meaning of that house, the meaning of that area of your life uh, where nine degrees of Virgo lands. And um, the if you don't have a birth chart or you don't know quite how to do that with your birth chart, then uh, feel free, there's two things you can do. Feel free to either watch my video on how to read your birth chart, which you can receive if you email us at info at just, re just write recording in the subject line. This is also a great video to watch right before you join the monthly forecasting forum, which is the second thing that you can do in order to understand uh, this even even better, even more in more detail. So once you've watched the video, how to read your birth chart, and you still need to know a little bit more, then feel free to get the recording of our last forecasting forum that we recorded on August 18th, because we covered the solar eclipse and the Mercury retrograde in that uh, in that forecasting forum in great detail. So, uh, so that's a, that's a great way to also understand it a little bit better. And you can purchase that on my website at astrologicalcoach.com. If you click on the link of that says monthly forecasting forum, and just um, just pay the twenty four dollars, and and I will email you the recording for for that last forum. But if you want to, you can also join us live for the next forecasting forum, which will be on Thursday, September fifteenth at 3 p.m. East Coast time, New York time, which is 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, LA time, or 7 p.m. Uh, British summer time, which is London time. So please remember that we will talk about, during that next uh, forecasting forum, we'll talk about the lunar eclipse, the upcoming lunar eclipse, and the Pluto station that's coming up, as well as Jupiter journeying through Libra for the next year, which will start in September as well. So if you'd like to get in alignment with all of those things, definitely feel free to join us live or sign up for the MP4 video recording if you don't have time on, on, those, uh, on that day or in those times. Um, you can do that, again, on my website, astrologicalcoach.com. Just click on the link there for forecasting forum. Um, and before I talk about the eclipse intentions, setting intentions for our eclipse uh, cycle, I want to just make a very quick announcement, which is that I will be available again for Skype and phone sessions after September 7th. Um, I'm currently not available for those sessions. So after September 7th, you can start to get readings with me again. So feel free to reach out to us at info at astrologicalcoach.com if you already now want to set up uh, a reading with me for after September 7th. All right? Now... The moment we've been waiting for setting intentions for this powerful new moon cycle and this eclipse cycle. Now with a solar eclipse, the best uh, uh, time is uh, to actually wait with setting intentions for 48 hours 
after the eclipse has become exact. And the reason for that is that the energy of the eclipse is so intense and so strong that we want to make sure that the energy settles before we set our intentions because there's going to be too much noise for us to be able to really get very clear about what it is that we want to set as an intention for the next five and a half months, right? So you want to wait 48 hours and you also definitely don't want to do setting the intentions during a moon void, of course, phase which if you get if you already receive my weekly forecasts you already know when those moon word of course phases are if you're not receiving the weekly forecasts yet feel free to sign up for those and to subscribe to them okay i'll talk about that a little bit later again but the best and most potent time to set our intentions uh, this time around will be from september 3rd at 5:03 a.m. until um 8.30 p.m. on September 4th, and that's both New York time. And uh, if you live in a different time zone, then feel free to plug these time zones into a time zone converter online. Um, and if you don't want to do that, then feel free to join me on my Facebook fan page or my Twitter page. I will be posting reminders several times so that you don't miss the most potent time to set intentions, all right? Uh, and just remember also these intentions, they are for the next five and a half months, right? So you're setting intentions not just for this uh, lunar cycle, you're setting them for this whole eclipse cycle until uh, late February of 2017. Now, while you're setting these intentions, keep in mind that, you know, love is the ultimate healer and just ask yourself, what needs my forgiveness? What needs healing in my life? What might connect all levels of my being, the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual? And you can already ask yourself these questions also right before the eclipse becomes exact and also the first 48 hours during the eclipse. You know, these are really great, great questions to meditate on and to sit and be with, right? Now, for more information about setting new moon or solar eclipse intentions, you can go to my Facebook fan page and check out the notes section uh, from your computer. Unfortunately, that can't be accessed from an iPhone or Android, but I will make sure that I repost it on my timeline so that way you can, you can see it uh, from your phone as well. Um, now, again, all the questions from this video are also available on my website at astrologicalcoach.com via my weekly forecast after August 28th. Just go to the to the entry of September 1st and there will be all the whole text about the solar eclipse. And if you want to receive them via email in your own inbox, then email us at info at astrologercoach.com and just write weekly forecasts in the subject line. And you can also sign up for my newsletter if you like. That one only gets sent out twice a month. So if you don't want to receive emails every week, uh, then feel free to sign up for the newsletter. Um, and the newsletter usually talks about my videos, uh, any announcements that I have, any special offers, any courses that I offer. And so that anything like that will be in the newsletter. Um, and you can just email us at info at astrologicalcoach.com and just write newsletter in the subject line. And if you want to receive the newsletter and the weekly forecast, feel free to just write newsletter and weekly forecasts in the subject line. You don't have to send two separate emails and my assistant will know to add you to those mailing, mailing lists. All right. So have a fantastic eclipse. Have a fantastic eclipse season. Um, I will be back uh, in a couple of weeks uh, or right around September 7th when I'm back from my trip. Um, I'll be recording the lunar eclipse video. So stay tuned until then. And uh, if you have any general questions for me, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, any personal questions I will require um, of you to book a reading with me uh, because it will take up too much of my time and I also want to make sure that I can answer your question thoroughly and completely. All right. So um, if you need, if you have questions, you can email me at sonia at astrologercoach.com or you can go to my website and book a reading uh, at astrologercoach.com and just click on the service link on the link next to services. All right, have a good one and I'll be in touch. And um, you can also get your questions answered via the monthly forecasting forum as well. That's, that's a great option too because I have uh, an online form where you can fill out questions 
and then those questions get answered during the monthly forecasting forum. Okay, so that's also an option. All right, have a good one, and I will see you soon. This is astrologer coach Sonia Francis. Goodbye.